None of the political issues that led to this war have been resolved. There's no doubt that this peace process is going to face, and does face, massive challenges. It's almost inevitable there will be considerable delays and setbacks along the way. But if both parties in the federal and Tigray leadership, if they maintain committed to the path of negotiations and ultimately peace, then that can prevent a, a disastrous breakdown of this peace process. Now, unsurprisingly, you know, one of the uh, most critical and difficult elements here is the security arrangements. Now, to understand that, we have to go back to uh, what happened here in Nairobi uh, 10 days after the Pretoria Agreement. Directly, as stipulated by the Pretoria Agreement, the military commanders from the federal government and the Tigray side, they met in Nairobi to sort of come up with a sort of implementation arrangements. Um, and what they decided was a slightly different version of the disarmament plans, which essentially said that the initial disarmament by the Tigray forces of their heavy weapons, which were led to believe as tanks and artillery, that that was to be done concurrently with the withdrawal of foreign forces, which we assumed to be with reference to Eritrea's military, and non-federal military forces, which is generally assumed to be a mention to the Amhara militia and regional forces. So that sets up a complicated uh, process of concurrent withdrawal and disarmament. Since that 12th of November agreement in Nairobi, there doesn't seem to have been too much progress on that. Indeed, there have been continued Tigrayan allegations that far from withdrawing, that the Eritrean forces have still been committing some abuses and, and looting in the parts of northern Tigray that they occupy. Um, but you know, in the days and weeks to come, this is a critical initial part of implementation. Possibly an even bigger challenge is the issue of Western Tigray. Um, because whilst these two agreements show an unprecedented level of cooperation and efforts to resolve this peacefully between the federal government and Tigray's government, the dispute in Western Tigray, where Amhara region has taken over what used to be a portion of territory administered by Tigray, and this is a fertile, relatively fertile area of Tigray, um, and it also you know, creates a, an international border to Sudan, so potentially a supply line for Tigray. That is you know, essentially a zero-sum dispute between Amhara and Tigray region. Um, it isn't clear how this is going to be resolved, but perhaps as the initial phase of this peace process, the federal government will assert its authority over Western Tigray. And although that will not resolve the dispute between the Tigray and Amhara political communities, it might allow this peace process to proceed without that issue you're completely derailing um, the process. There's also a, another major issue with regards to the humanitarian access and the service restoration. Throughout this war, humanitarian access and the federal government's ability to, to constrict Tigray has been a vital part of its military strategy. And we see some clear signs of uh, trust being rebuilt and cooperation and a desire to end this peacefully between the two sides. But we're at a very early stage. What we really need to see, and as the international community has been constantly asking for, is for the federal government to decouple humanitarian access and related um, services and, and issues from its political and military objectives here. We need a complete reopening and reconnecting of all of Tigray, which will um, provide you know, much needed relief for the six million people there, rather than you know, aid access and the restoration of services and allowing normal trade to resume, rather than that being sort of conditioned on the political and military situation. The other major issue here is that um, with the Pretoria Agreement, we have these political concessions by the TPLF and the Tigray leadership. They agree to form an inclusive regional administration in cooperation with the federal government. Um, they agree to hold new elections. So far, as with the security arrangements, we've seen quite limited progress. And that might be expected because these are very sensitive issues. There needs to be time for internal consultations. And with some of the statements we've seen from Mekele, from the Tigray leadership, the party and the government, it has raised the question of whether they're sincerely committed 
to honoring those, con those concessions and those terms, which they signed up to in, in Pretoria um, on, these, on these political issues. Now, in the same way that Tigray's leadership and people um, and the, the, the forces there may well get very frustrated, to put it mildly, if they don't see the progress on humanitarian access and service restoration that they want to as a result of this agreement. If on the federal side, they see the Tigray forces and commanders not playing ball on the disarmament side of things, and if they also see a lack of political progress, they see this, as they perceive it, this illegitimately elected um, TPLF government still in power and no progress on these political issues, that might well lead people on the federal side to say, we were wrong to assume good faith on the part of um, our partners in, in Tigray. And again, it raises the risk of military confrontation reoccurring. Now, if we get that sort of failure of cooperation and to make progress here, failure to continue to build trust between the federal government and Tigray's government, that could well be something which essentially is to the liking um, of Eritrea's government and its leader, President Isaiah Safwerki. He's an arch enemy of the TPLF. Um, he wants to see their political destruction. So this is you know, an important part of the, of the risks that this peace process faces. You're given the you know, huge needs and the considerable fragility of this peace process, there's an obvious need for the international community to remain vigilant. Of course, if we should be approaching you know, what sort of looks like a crisis point, um, or if there is a clear and sustained impasse in any important part of this peace process, whether it's humanitarian um, restoration of federal authority, the Western Tigray issue, the withdrawal of Eritrean troops, or the disarmament provisions for the Tigray forces, if there is a significant impasse in any of those um, critical elements, then the international community, primarily the African Union, supported by its partners, needs to bring um, you know, the, the, the main parties, federal government and, and then Tigray leadership together again to try and you know, resolve whatever problems there might be. The challenge that the, the parties have now is this really doesn't do anything to resolve the major political differences. For example, there has been a growth in secessionist sentiment um, amongst Tigrayans during this war. Many of them do not feel part of, of Ethiopia because of the way the war was conducted, because the Ethiopian leadership invited uh, Eritrea's military in, which then conducted atrocities against Tigrayan people. Um, then there is you know, the Western Tigray issue with Amhara region claiming it as its own, you know, a, a, expelling Tigrayans in a process that was described as ethnic cleansing. Also, the Tigray forces you know, they went on the offensive last year, essentially in an attempt to unseat um, the Prime Minister, Abiy Ahmed, and, and they committed atrocities also um, during that campaign. So these are really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of Ethiopia's political problems.